Good afternoon. The Jaguars and Jacksonville have been working together since the early 1990s when Touchdown Jacksonville and Mayor Ed Austin's administration partnered to lift North Florida into the big leagues, the National Football League. Since November 30th, 1993, it's been a labor of love to build an NFL franchise, a major league city, and a passionate fan base. And over and over and over again, through 29 seasons on the field, we've done just that. There were times when it was hard, really, really, really hard, and some thought we weren't up to it. But we kept working and innovating and believing in what was possible. From Wayne Weaver to Shad Khan, from Mayor Austin to Mayor Delaney to Mayor Payton to Mayor Brown to Mayor Curry and now to Mayor Deegan, it's always been about working to get the job done. And today we announced the city of Jacksonville and the Jaguars will continue the endeavor to make our community, as was promised years ago, the bold new city of the South. And we'll do it in a downtown stadium that shows our doubters and reinforce with our supporters that we will not be denied. We will never be denied because we are true to the Jaguars brand, proud, bold, and committed. So I'd like to introduce to you, although they need no introduction, the president of the Jaguars, Mark Lamping. The owner of the Jaguars, Shad Khan. The mayor of our great city, the Honorable Donna Deegan. And the lead negotiator for the city of Jacksonville, Mike Weinstein. So now I'd like to invite Mr. Khan to come to the podium. Well, thank you, Brian, and thank you, everyone, for being here. Uh, indeed, it is a great day. And I had the privilege last night of joining uh, Mayor Deegan for a moment of celebration. But today, uh, it's my honor to publicly express my gratitude to the mayor, her staff, our staff, um, Ron Salem, uh, City Council President, and many others who gave everything they had. So in four years, we'll retire the term Stadium of the Future. Uh, it's finally going to be done and complete. Uh, of course, the future doesn't happen if it's not for the commitment uh, to Jacksonville made more than 30 years ago by uh, Dolores and Wayne Weaver. Their legacy will forever be unrivaled, and they deserve our never-ending respect and thanks. So thanks, Wayne and Dolores. Um, I'll always be humbled that Wayne trusted me to carry on uh, the Jaguars tradition in Jacksonville, a city that he and Dolores have always loved. I love Jacksonville immensely, and I especially love what's possible here. Um, a lot has changed from the inaugural season uh, for the Weavers in 1995 to my first year in 2012, right through to today as we prepare to celebrate the Jaguars' 30th anniversary in the NFL. But there's been one constant throughout Everyone wants to doubt Jacksonville. And as of last night, that should no longer be the case. People can move on with other stuff, okay? Not a good day for uh, uh, the doubting Thomases. So, but as of last night, I think we did something very significant. In our, but we gotta remember, our journey to last night's historic vote was long, but it will always be remembered for the leadership of Mayor Deegan and her team. Also, amazing work of Mark Lamping and his team, and not to be overlooked, uh, the passionate support from the fans, residents, and business owners throughout Duval County. This day and tomorrow is yours. 
Never Doubt Jacksonville. With that, with that, it's my distinct honor to introduce, with my gratitude, Mayor of Jacksonville, Donna Deegan. get the big tall box so that you can actually see me. Oh my goodness, what a great exhale today is. What a wonderful day. Thank you so much, Shad. I am so incredibly grateful. Uh, the entire city is grateful for your belief in Jacksonville and the significant investments that you're making in our community. A billion dollars so far, folks, is no joke, right? Pretty impressive. I hope you all believe now, <laughs> as, as, as Shad said. I think it's so important that we cannot make that point enough. Jacksonville very often has had a bit of an inferiority complex. Let's believe in ourselves. Shad believes in us, the Jaguars believe in us, and, and hopefully the evidence of this agreement is that we are going to make this a successful partnership for many decades to come. This is really an exciting day for our city. It's been, as, as Shad said, a very long time in coming. So I too want to add my thanks. Shad, Mark, the entire Jaguars team, I cannot even begin to tell you how hard everybody worked. Uh, you have been a dream, an absolute dream to work with. Uh, we knew the vision that we wanted to get to. We knew we wanted to get to yes. We started off saying we both wanted to get to yes, and we worked very hard together to make that happen. I'm also very grateful for the diligent work of our chief negotiator, Mike Weinstein. I told, yeah, give him a hand, please. I told Mike that last couple of weeks before we closed out the agreement is, it, it is gonna be a great chapter in, in one of our books. We're gonna call it Burn the Ships because uh, we basically went to the negotiating team, Mark knows all of us together and said, there's no turning back. We have set the deadlines, we are gonna get there and we're gonna get there together. And uh, boy, I'll tell you, Mike did an amazing job and I'm, I'm so grateful for him. I'm grateful for the Office of General Counsel. Um, as I said last night, I should probably send them flowers every day for at least a month. I'm grateful to my staff for their tireless efforts in all of this. Never ever stopped working hard to get this across the finish line. Darnell Smith, especially, I'll tell you what, <laughs> he, uh, he, ma he made sure that, uh, that we kept our foot on the gas and that failure was not an option. So it really did take all of us, and it shows what it's possible to do when we are all united and rowing in the same direction toward a common goal that benefits our entire city. I can't leave the city council out of that because they, that, you know, Ron Salem and the city council took the timeline too. And they said, let's drive to this. Let's make sure we do it. It's not easy to get 19 people to, to work together in, in, in a fashion that, that's that um, concerted and, and focused and quick. And, and they did that. And so it really was a team effort to make all this happen. I'll never forget that moment when I was on the anchor desk and we announced what I thought to be the impossible, what a lot of us thought to be the impossible. And that is that Jacksonville got its team 30 years ago. What an amazing night. Last night's vote by the city council and this gathering today will forever be etched into my memory just like that night 30 years ago. This is just as big a deal, what we have today. Mark has also said many times over the past year that if we just build the stadium of the future, we will have missed a big opportunity. So I'm grateful that the Jaguars partner with us on a once in a generation community benefits agreement. We got some of that investment passed last night and we remain committed to finishing the job when the city council reconvenes in July. Together we are turning renderings into reality for the betterment of Jacksonville because of the people in this room. Thank you from the bottom of my heart and I just think it's time to make it official. What do you say, Shad? You wanna, wanna sign something? Let's, let's, go, let's go sign our names here on our proclamation. I have the, I have the technology.
As the mayor signs it, we'll talk a lot this fall about the 30th season, and we'll spend a lot of time looking back at the last 30 years. This is the beginning of looking forward to the next 30 years in North Florida. Okay, we good? All right, thank you. Okay, mindful that we will all um, have greater exposures and, and uh, some one-on-ones later, we're gonna conduct a somewhat abbreviated six or seven question um, Q&A right now. So if you have a question, media types, uh, please raise your hand. We'll hand you a microphone. Uh, please identify not only yourself and your media outlet, but direct your question to whichever dignitary you choose. So uh, let's get started, please. Uh, let's go right down here in the front. David Bauerlein with the Florida Times Union. I just want to ask Mr. Khan, so when you bought the team, you probably knew at some point it was going to come to this day where you'd either have a deal or you wouldn't. Can you talk about when you first bought the team, did you already thinking about what the stadium of the future would be? When did that actually sort of lock in on you for something that you were really focused on? And as far as the outcome, uh, how the reality before you today may have compared to what you had envision might happen years ago as you reach this point because it had to be one thing or the other either you had a deal or not for staying in Jacksonville okay so um, you know I mean you got to remember when I got here um, uh, t 12 years ago 12 plus years ago I mean we had a lot of challenges and uh, so the first thing um, you know we had was how do we make the team sustainable, uh, really for the long haul, and um, so, and really from business aspect and obviously um, uh, other aspects. But uh, uh, you know, as time went on, it was uh, very evident that uh, we needed, uh, you know, a stadium. We needed facilities. Um, I think what you're sitting here. Uh, MEC, I think, is a great example of that, the private-public partnership. Um, this is a small market, and uh, really the public-private partnership is what makes it work or doesn't make it work. So, uh, and early on, really, the city was very helpful when we did some upgrades in the stadium right here. So, you know, I've always been optimistic that... Uh, we will figure out a way um, to have a long-term, uh, really, solution. Now, the stadium, um, you know, my goal was that we want to have a stadium that is state-of-the-art, uh, will uh, really uh, sustain uh, for the long haul, uh, be an icon for the city, uh, lead to economic growth, um, there were, you know, there have been challenges here o over the past. Uh, uh, how do we bridge all those, bring people together, but really architecturally 
be something that's very significant and no compromises. So with the public-private partnership, it's really important that we don't waste the city's money, and frankly, we're not wasting my money, okay? So our interests were aligned, and yet be no compromises. So some of the things that really have not been talked about, uh, the stadium process started probably four years ago. You know, Mark can elaborate on that. Uh, when we did the surveys, what people want. Uh, I mean, I've been an architecture buff, uh, you know, all my life. Um, that originally is, you know, what really had attracted me to Chicago, Frank Lloyd Wright, and I even was an architecture school my freshman year uh, till I found out what they make, and, <laughs> and then I thought, uh, better switch to engineering. But uh, um, so, but really that's been, kind of a nighttime hobby for me to really look at the stadium. So, so the process we went through uh, is, uh, you know, we hired eight of the best architects. We paid them. Uh, Mark led the effort. We got all the ideas. Uh, we threw our ideas. Then we got it down to two. We paid them again to come up with. And, and to me, in this day and age, you got to have a great product, um, um, you know, an icon that represents the city, but it really has to be environmentally very green. So, um, <laughs> you know, I've been, um, like the Colosseum, I'm a huge fan in Rome. Okay, it's 2,000 years old. Parts of it work today. Some of the sight lines, some of the things they did. So our goal was, you know, we don't want to do the usual approach, which is, uh, we can't afford it anyway, but uh, a lot of times the best decisions are when you're limited with time and money. The worst are when you have unlimited time and money. So uh, using the bowl, which is lower bowl here, perfect condition. Uh, reusing, um, you know, the scoreboards. They were state of the art. The city paid for them. We paid for them. Lowering them, fit in without compromises. Uh, roof, but yet, not, you know, we don't have to worry about snow loads and some of the things. Uh, we want it cool without air conditioning, environmentally um, responsible, using the winds that are predictable in Jacksonville, how to cool. And, you know, some of the environmental issues on pollution and what have you. I, you know, concrete is a big polluter and being able to use parts that exist. Um, so, uh, I think when it's all said and done, besides the design, the bang for the buck the city's getting uh, is going to be over the top. And I think, uh, if anything, it's going to show how you can achieve a lot with very little. Long answer, but I mean, we have kind of lived this uh, thing here as the Jaguars over the last really five years. So it's very th well thought out. Uh, and uh, with a lot of time and effort. Okay. Further questions? Uh, second row right here. Okay. I don't think I'll get another one with the uh, <laughs> long answers. <laughs> Le left. Yeah. Uh, this is Rich Donnelly, First Coast News. This is for Mayor Donna Deegan. Uh, you spoke about this earlier, but again, as a Jacksonville resident, what does it mean to you to be the mayor that oversaw this project come to its completion and will remain a, an icon for the city going forward. Well, it's just an incredibly proud moment. That's all I can say. I mean, I, I obviously I knew coming in that this would be something that we would be dealing with. Uh, it became a top focus, wanting to get move through it uh, as efficiently and quickly as possible, getting the best deal for all involved. And fortunately, uh, Mark and, and Shad were on that same page. Um, Mike was a, was a fantastic negotiator. Uh, so for me personally, it's just a real point of pride that not only that we were able to bring this in for a landing and have the Jaguars be with us for 30 more years, but all that portends for the rest of the city as we look to grow our downtown and, 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 and create the type of city that we all really want to have and believe we should have. So um, very, very proud today and, and frankly relieved to get it over the finish line. Rich, if you could share with Jamal right next door, he's got a question. Uh, Jamal St. Cyr, News for Jax. Mr. Khan, uh, you mentioned the Weavers throughout this process, and I guess the board behind you says we did it again. Wayne Weaver was the owner, the owner the first time that the city of Jacksonville went through this process. Have you 
uh, confided with them, talked with the Weavers throughout this process at all? Um, they were aware of what we're doing since the vote. Uh, you know, I've not been able to talk to him, but I did text him. You know, we did it again, okay? So, uh, obviously, you know, his legacy is, uh, I think, just uh, will live forever. So, uh, but uh, regrettably, I didn't talk to him this morning. I tried, so, yeah. Questions? Dan, right here, front and center. Uh, Mr. Khan, Dan Hicken, Action Sports Jacks, congratulations. Um, I can't handle all the big numbers up here, but I do know sports, and I haven't had you on camera uh, since the signing of number 16, so I'm curious uh, about your thoughts about that negotiation, how that went, and having Trevor along with this stadium and pretty good coach as well going forward with your franchise. Yeah, I, I think, you know, uh, you need all of that. And I think uh, we're sitting in this building, you're looking at that. Expectations should be up too, that you know, for us, uh, uh, you know, winning, winning now is uh, expectation. So uh, uh, I think, um, uh, you know, obviously I've talked to Trevor a lot over the last few years and, uh, um, you know, from really, that was COVID year even before the draft. So I'm really, uh, you know, I think he represents the city, he represents the Jaguars. I couldn't ask for any, anyone better. And uh, so, um, you know, obviously I was hoping that would get done before this, but, uh, and I'm glad it did get done, so. Okay. Straight ahead here, Will. Good afternoon, Will Brown, Jacksonville Today. Forgive the mask, I've been sick all week, but I wanted to be here. Uh, Mr. Khan, this, mess this question is for you. Um, how did the, the lessons of, of Lot J and previous development attempts um, spur this, this for your perspective, spur the renovation to get across the line? What were some of the lessons from those challenges that you would say helped in this negotiation? Yeah, I, uh, I think we learned that uh, we're gonna control our own dialogue that we're not going to allow um, an advocate of ours, and in this case, and it, was, it, was, it was all well-meaning, but um, the Lache, the, the narrative was really controlled by the mayor's office, and uh, we didn't get the result by a vote of 12 to seven, I need to remind you, did not get the vote. Um, but we decided coming out of that, if, if we're gonna fail, we wanna make sure that we're failing through our own dialogue and not looking and saying, boy, I wish this third party would have done something differently. So, you know, there were there was a lot of positive things that that came out of that. Had some very honest discussions with really key people. David Miller being being one of them. Some of the people that were uh, the biggest opponents of Lache, I'll use uh, you know uh, Councilman Carlucci as well. Uh, really, were great um, uh, counsels to me personally going forward, and uh, not surprisingly. Uh, both in the case, and there's there's many others I could name, those two became two of the bigger cheerleaders for first the Shipyards Project, which keep in mind that was approved less than 12 months after Lot J, and then subsequently the stadium. So probably the biggest thing we learned is if we're gonna fail, let's make sure we failed under our plan and not somebody else uh, poorly executing uh, their plan. Okay, we probably have time for one more question if anybody has it, or are we good? All right. Let's, uh, let's cut it right there um, and uh, want to let the media types know that uh, we're going to break out into our breakout one-on-ones here shortly, any minute now, so we'll bring the pairings through. Hey, just, just, just before we get out of here, um, after the first four or five rows, you know, a lot of the focus uh, is, is on me because I was like uh, the, the point person on this, but there are literally hundreds of Jaguar employees that are here in the room today that all played a role in this, and, I, and, and Shad recognizes that. I recognize that and wanted to make sure you all got an appropriate thank you. So thanks to all of you. Well said. So we're going to break out to those breakout one-on-ones. These four, our four guests up here, will be up in the media workroom in a little bit over an hour after these one-on-one circuit uh, completes itself. So um, we will see you all very shortly. And thanks to our our front office brethren for, uh, for being here for this historic moment. Thank you.